love history. Did your yeah. wife keep her maiden name? Man, I tried to call you. Did you change your number? Man, what you wearing? You smell good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Muchos thank you. The pen is mightier, Trebek. <laughs> Let's bring in Anthony Kastrovitz of MLB.com. He has written an article ranking the 10 best lineups in Major League Baseball. You can read it on MLB.com. Anthony, why don't you go 10 through 6, just giving a quick, quick nugget on each of them, and then we'll go the other half a little bit later. Yeah, absolutely. It's the holidays, joy to the world, most wonderful time of year. So let's upset some people here yes, on national television. Absolutely. Uh, so number 10 is always my wild card spot. I'm giving my wild card spot to the Guardians. There you go. They were 15th in runs per game last year. They've added power, which they needed uh, in Josh Bell and Mike Zanino to go with their best contact rate in baseball and, and great base running. So I got them at number 10. Number nine, I got the Yankees offense, better known as Aaron Judge. Uh, I think we saw in the second half, particularly in the playoffs, that the, the Yankees are very Aaron Judge-centric, so I kind of ding them for that, even though they will probably score a bunch of runs. Uh, number eight, I got the Phillies. I got Phillies fans yelling at me on Twitter. They should be number one, whatever. <laughs> um, and I get it. I, I get the enthusiasm for the Phillies, especially with Trey Turner. Uh, they were 10th in weighted runs created plus. You know, that, that takes the ballpark and league factors into account. Uh, last year, that was with Bryce Harper for 99 games. So that's the X factors. How long do they have Bryce Harper and at what level? Number seven is the Dodgers, uh, dinging them there for the loss of Trey Turner and yeah. Justin Turner. J.D. Martinez coming off a not very J.D. Martinez type year uh, is their acquisition so far. They're just taking on a much younger look in the lower half of their lineup. So that'll be interesting. And then I got the Braves at number six. They, they could be much higher. You know, the Ronald Acuna Jr., if he is the MVP caliber Acuna, that lineup looks a lot different. It's already a very great lineup. Uh, it could be an absurdly good lineup if Acuna can just bounce back to his old level. Uh, if Matt Olson can bounce back to his A's level. Um, and obviously they made that move for Sean Murphy, which it's maybe not an upgrade over their 2021 productivity from the DH slash catching spot, but it, it stabilizes. It gives them a better opportunity to repeat that, I think, uh, for next year. And as we pivot to the uh, top five, at number yes. five, you have the St. Louis Cardinals. I got the St. Louis Cardinals. So they were actually fifth in weighted runs created plus last year. Now, granted, that was with Albert Pujols playing like Albert Pujols in the second half, much to our shock and, and, and amazement and enjoyment. Uh, but now you add Wilson, uh, Wilson Contreras, who... If you think about Yadi Molina to Wilson Contreras at this stage of Yadi Molina's life, uh, that's as big an offensive upgrade as any team has made this winter. Yeah. Uh, Yadi last year in limited time because of injury was 50% below league average. Contreras is 30% above league average. That's a huge upgrade. You know, you got Goldschmidt, Arenado. Uh, they always pluck guys out of their system and, and get great performance from them. That was the case last year. Brendan Donovan, Lars Newtbar steps up. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really strong, deep lineup. Yeah, the St. Louis Cardinals. Amen. I like them. Yeah, I like that. I actually thought that was a good landing spot for Michael Conforto. That was, but I, I mean, they got a lot of young guys, and they you do. didn't need to push yeah. any of them down onto the bench. Or and by the way, uh, Jordan Walker, their top prospect, who I didn't mention, is yep. is uh, could a huge, you know, huge could be a prospect. huge impact. There. I, I mean, yeah. I, I saw him in Arizona at the Arizona Fall League. He is a he's a man beast. Yeah, he, he yeah. is a man, and there's a very real chance uh, he'll he'll make the opening day roster, but. Obviously, a lot of time uh, to figure that out. At number four, you're going north of the border. Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, I'll go with the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays last year statistically were the best offense in the American League. Um, now, they did trade Teoscar Hernandez to the Mariners, and that's that's a lot of offensive upside out the door. They are better defensively now with Kevin Kiermaier. They're not better offensively. We are talking strictly about offense here. So you, you ding them a little for that. They can be very streaky, too. Uh, they also hit into a lot of double plays last year if you want to get you know, picky, but look at this lineup, man. I mean, they got four guys at the top of the order there who are all they need at a least lefty 25. Bat. But yeah, that's that's <laughs> been the case there for a while. And, you know, I thought maybe Conforto would have been a great fit there. There's actually about 10 teams I could have named as a good fit for Michael Conforto prior yep. to this morning. So, um, so, yeah, they need a lefty bat. I'll be interesting to see if they parlay their catching depth into that lefty bat in the trade market. Yeah, they do have uh, they do have quite a bit of catching. Uh, at their disposal, they if they want. They do. I like. I mean, I love seeing it. And Alejandro Kirk. I mean, he. I knew he was a good hitter. I didn't realize how good of a defensive catcher he could be behind the plate. And then, of course, Danny Jansen, almost like a revival last year, which was great to see because he's such a he's such a great guy. Anthony, at number three, you have America's team, the Houston yeah. Astros, <laughs> the reigning and defending World Series champions. 
Yeah, so to be clear, with these rankings, I, I thought four through nine, you could take them pretty much in any order. And I think three through one, any of these teams could be number one. You could make the argument the Astros are the best lineup in baseball. Um, what they have going for them in this era in which they have owned the American League the last six years is the power to go with the plate discipline, which is so rare. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're consistently one of the best contact teams in baseball, one of the lowest strikeout rates in baseball to go with the big power. They've added Jose Abreu, a huge RBI machine. Uh, Michael Brantley is healthier now and, and returns, and, and you know he and uh, Jordan Alvarez can share left field and, and DH. And you got Alvarez, Pena, Tucker. Those guys are just coming into, door, into their own. So while Brantley and Abreu are on the older side, you also have you balance that with the uh, you know, the up and comers. So yeah, it's, that's, that's a tremendous lineup. Yeah. This is, this is a lineup that's stacked Anthony, obviously. I mean, realistically outside, when you go one through seven, like they have right there in that lineup, uh, there's, there's, there's literally not a, a weak spot, a hole, nothing in that one through seven. Um, and then you know what they can do from a pitching standpoint. Yeah. It's such a good team. Um, such a good win. I'm eager to see what the Mariners do yeah. uh, because I think they're going to push the Astros quite hard uh, in that division in 2023. All right, who's next, Anthony? Next, we got the Padres, who have done it again. They have shocked us again with the Sander Bogarts mm. acquisition. And, you know, it was interesting. Last year, the, you know, they, they acquired uh, Juan Soto and, and Josh Bell. That the offense did not take off to the level that we expected. It was yeah, kind right. of just the, more of the same in terms of runs per game, actually. Um, but I think Soto, you know, I think he's going to settle in. I, I think anytime you're part of a, a all year dealing with the trade rumors and, and the big blockbuster deal, um, he's going to have the spring training with San Diego. I think he's going to settle in and be the soda we know him to be. Tatis, of course, 20 games remaining in that suspension. But, I mean, one through four, what do you do with that? That is an incredible one through four right there. And Cronenworth, Ooh. an all-star last year, so he's very solid. Matt Carpenter was like Barry Bonds move. for a few weeks there with the Yankees last year. So if he can just, you know, hit the Barry Bonds switch again, that's, that's huge for them. Obviously, there's more question marks in the lower half. Trent Grisham, hey, just just be playoff Trent Grisham in the regular yeah. season, and you really got something at the bottom of the order. But, yeah, that one through four is, is nonsense. It's crazy. Um, I don't mean to name drop here, but I will. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I talked with Juan Soto in the DR, and Ooh. I got the sense that everything that was swirling around him yeah. with the trade and the Nats and then coming to the new team, I think I got the sense that that really affected him. That's and I, th I think we're going to see – vintage Juan Soto in 2020. That's hard to deal with if you're a veteran player. And yeah. he is such a, I mean, he is a, a veteran in a sense that he's been around the league yeah. for so long, but he's so young. I mean, to have to deal with all that and then go out and perform to the level that the expectations that people have of Juan Soto now, which is the greatest hitter since Ted Williams, yeah. is so incredibly hard to try to go out and kind of, you know, basically repeat that. Um, but realistically, he just has to stay true to himself. He'll find the right mindset. He'll be he'll be great. Anthony, at number one, you have um, everyone's favorite underdog, that plucky little, <laughs> you know, right. upstart, the little, the little, little engine, engine that, that could. could, the New York yes. Mets. Yeah, and you know, we do this. I do this list every year just before opening day. We decided to jump the gun this year after the Carlos Correa news, and uh, you know, I, I think. It's interesting because the Mets got knocked last year for power issue, you know, a power yeah. outage. They were 15th in home runs. They were eighth in slug. When you take that weighted runs created plus stat uh, and adjust for the ballpark and whatnot, they were the third best team in baseball. They were the first number one team in baseball in the second half in weighted runs created plus. Now they've added some power from Carlos Correa and mm. they were actually 18th in OPS last year at third base. I think they're going to do better this year with yeah, Carlos Correa I think so. manning that position. And oh, by the way, at catcher, they were 26th in yeah. OPS and Francisco Alvarez, who's not listed there, but you know, he could be as soon as opening day, he could be their catcher and he's got big power. So yeah, a very deep lineup. And the way we've got it uh, listed there, you know, that, that could be wrong. You could put, there's a lot of things you could do. You could yep. put Marte in the number two spot and have Correa behind Alonzo uh, to get, you know, Alonzo better pitches to hit perhaps. It's, it's just so much you can, Buck Showalter's got a, a very difficult job these days. Uh, yeah, it's a, that it's a good but, problem. And, and I think yeah. I think we should all remember uh, Anthony Starling Marte, who is, I think, a very important part to that team. Mm -hmm. He was compromised towards the end of the year. Yeah, a lot with the right. with the yeah. wrist injury and everything. It was it was tough uh, for him to go through. I think that lineup. I mean, you nailed it. I, with that lineup, they upgraded at positions that were true weaknesses for them, um, mm -hmm. and they did it in a pretty substantial way. I mean, Omar Narvaez isn't going to hit you 30 homers or or be a, a great hitting catcher, but what they got from that position last year, uh, just from an offensive standpoint. Right. 
it's it's a tremendous upgrade. And then I don't think people realize how good Daniel Vogelbach was at times. Yeah. And right. when you can platoon him and Escobar from the right side against lefties was fantastic and has been fantastic over his career. And you just start to think about the way they can move around those pieces and use that DH role. It's it's a very, very good lineup. Yeah, I'm bringing Vogel back. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Anthony, Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays. Enjoy your weekend. Likewise. Same to you guys.